we're in a lounge, a, a kind of a separate departure lounge. And Prabhupada asked Jagadish to read from the Bhagavatam. So Jagadish was reading, and Prabhupada went to the back of the room and lay down on one of the benches, seemingly to take a nap. And Jagadish was reading, and uh, Jagadish, he, he could put an elephant that was charging you to sleep if he wanted to. <laughs> Sometimes he had, a, he had a voice like that. <laughs> so he got through one purport, and everyone was out. <laughs> <laughs> so he stopped and looked up, and when he stopped, Prabhupada lifted his head and said, I am listening. So Prabhupada was always aware, and he wasn't really sleeping. When it was time to board the plane, Prabhupada was walking towards the, the plane, and there was some devotees from a temple in Cleveland, which we used to call Temple Number no. 2, and it, and it was uh, black body devotees. They had their own temple they started. And uh, they weren't, they didn't get along with the other temple too well, and didn't get along with GBC too well at the time. <laughs> but Prabhupada had actually approved that they could have their own temple if they wanted. So one of the ladies from that temple approached Prabhupada and asked him to come visit their temple. And Prabhupada said, you can come see me at New Vrindavan. So the lady replied, uh, we don't have any car, she Prabhupada. So Prabhupada said, uh, you can arrange it with your GBC, Jagadish. He'll arrange some transportation for you. So uh, I could see how Prabhupada was trying to bring the whole family together. You know, they were a little bit separate, and Prabhupada wanted the GBC to help them and them to cooperate you know, with the rest of the movement. It was a nice move. There's another incident in Detroit. Uh, at the time, they had just gotten the Fisher Mansion. Uh, a gentleman came that obviously mixed in the higher society of, of the Detroit. And he came to see Prabhupada. And he was telling Prabhupada a bit of the history of the building, a bit of the history of the auto industry. And uh, I was sitting in the room, and I was waiting for Prabhupada to preach to this gentleman. And I kept expecting Prabhupada to say something and to preach something Krishna conscious. Prabhupada never did. Prabhupada was very polite, spoke a few words here and there, and he just listened to the gentleman speak. And he never preached to him at, at all. And after the interview, I, I realized how Prabhupada was expert. And because this gentleman didn't really want to hear anything spiritual. He wasn't interesting. And, anything spiritual, but he liked to meet famous people. And Prabhupada picked up on that. And he met Prabhupada, and he was very happy to meet Prabhupada. But he wasn't interested in anything spiritual, and Prabhupada didn't really waste his time you know, preaching to him. Another time in that same room, there was a discussion about uh, the kirtans, the Radhadamadar kirtans that we were having on campus or on the street where we'd set up. And Prabhupada was saying we just should use coal and cartels. And at that time, we had many instruments. We had harmonium, we had uh, esaraj, which was like a violin. We had ektar, and we had an instrument that had strings, and you'd play it with little hammers. So there was a discussion where Prabhupada was saying uh, just use coal and cartels. And uh, Adi Kesha said that the, the people were attracted to the party because of the instruments. And Prabhupada didn't seem to take that very seriously. And then Adi Kesha said, uh, but Vishnu John said, and Prabhupada cut him off, and said, who is Vishnu John? I am your spiritual master. And also in that meeting, Prabhupada said there shouldn't be any harmonium during the artis. And previously, and you hear a lot of tapes of Bardaraj and others playing harmonium, so that was stopped during RTs. And it didn't seem like Prabhupada just wanted some expert musicians, he wanted devotees. So that was stopped, and at, at that time, the Radhanamadar party we just went back to um, Madungan cartels on the, on the public kirtans for a while. And eventually, we, we added a couple instruments here and there. I had heard with Prabhupada's permission. Yeah. I don't know for sure. 
Oh, one thing that happened in Detroit, there was a, <clears throat> a, a tall black fellow that had been coming to the Sunday feast in Detroit, and the temple had sort of thrown him out <clears throat> because they said he was bothering some of the ladies that were coming to the Sunday feast. So our party, anybody that wanted to come on, they'd come on no matter how crazy they were. <laughs> So we asked this guy, come on with us. So he joined our bus, and I went. Uh, he lived in a very poor part of town, and I went and got some of his belongings. He had an old guitar and a, a couple, some clothes, and it was a really run-down apartment that he lived in. So we were following Prabhupada, so he joined the bus, and we drove to Toronto, where that was Prabhupada's next stop. And we parked, uh, probably was around the corner in a house from the temple. And we parked one driveway up. And if I was sitting in the driver's seat, sometimes I could see Prabhupada coming from his house like that. So one time I was sitting in the driver's seat and, and Prabhupada and some devotees came out of the house. And uh, one Indian body devotee dove at Prabhupada's feet. And within the blink of an eye, Prabhupada put his cane like this. And that devotee's head stopped at the cane, and his hands missed Prabhupada's feet. <laughs> Later on, he let, he let him touch his feet, but at that time, he, he stopped it on the spot. <laughs> and he walked by the bus to go to the temple, and he noticed that one of the bus bays had been pushed in. Some drunken driver had and smashed into it about a week ago. We hadn't got it fixed. So Prabhupada admonished, uh, 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 said you should get it fixed right away, and the bus should always look first class. And he also told us we should keep it very, very clean. So from then on, uh, almost every day I would wash it, keep it nice and clean. And uh, our deities were Gornitai. We'd Gornitai deities, brass. And Lord Nityananda was particularly beautiful. Although all the deities on the Radhadamadar party were bought from the same place, uh, they all looked different. And our Lord Nityananda was particularly beautiful. So Prabhupada walked by one morning and he stood on his tiptoes and looked in the window. And later on he said, I've seen your Gorni Thai, I've seen your Lord Nityananda. He is very beautiful. Everyone on this bus is going back to Godhead. He didn't say when. Then uh, years later, I was visiting the Detroit temple, the, which was now the Fisher Mansion, and there was that devotee that we had thrown off. The, we had actually had to throw him off later, too, because he was really a wild guy. There he was, Dodi Kurta, first class. He was a temple guard. He was doing a lot of service. And the minute I saw him, I remember that quote where Prabhupada said, we're going back to Godhead. <laughs>